What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Microsoft Flow and we are going to talk about manual trigger flow inputs. That's a mouthful. So, what do I mean by a manual flow trigger input? Um, so, as you've probably seen from a lot of my videos, I trigger the flows using a instant flow button, so like just press the button and the flow runs but you can actually gather information at that stage that you can then use later on. So I'm going to talk you through that and all the different options that we've got. I'm in Microsoft Flow here, uh, and I'm going to click New Flow, and I'm going to click Instant From Blank. And here we've got this manual trigger of a flow button. I'm going to skip over creating uh, the name here. So we've got this manual trigger for a flow. So if I just tested this with other actions, it would instantly run. As I expand it, I can actually add inputs. So let's take a look. Clicking on that, I have these six these uh, yeah, six different inputs. Text, yes, no, file, email, number, and date. So let's take a look at each one of these. So text, I can have a text input. I could ask a question at this point. Uh, yes, no. Again, I could ask another question and get, gather a yes, no response. Um, I could add a file in here. Um, I could add an email. Um, I could add a number or I could add a date. So um, each one of these will export something or give you information and gather information at that flow stage. So the text import could be any text. You could ask a question, you could get to fill in something. Um, and you could store that for later on. Yes, no, we have the option of, of gathering a yes, no input. Um, file content, that allows you to upload a file, so you could maybe store that into SharePoint or store that into OneDrive or something like that. Uh, email, we could uh, gather someone's email address um, to then send an email on to someone. Uh, number, so we could put in a number. Uh, this works with uh, whole numbers, decimals, uh, negative numbers. Um, so we have, have those options. And uh, we also can um, get a date as well. Now to see what these look like and to talk through some bits, I'm going to create a compose action in here. And then we'll stick some of these inputs in. So first one is the input. Then we're going to get the yes and no. Uh, then what's after that? I'm going to skip over file content for now uh, because it can mess up some of these inputs because it uh, uploads the file um, into um, Azure and we get like, a lengthy input. Um, so it, it's kind of, it, it takes it as, as the code level, not as like the file level. Um, so it's not very good for a demo uh, in this instance. Uh, we're going to take the email address, email. And then we're going to take the number, um, a different line, and then we get the trigger date as well on a different line. So if we hit save, we can then test this Microsoft flow and we can kind of see what these inputs look like. So we'll click on test. I'll perform the action, save and test. And then as opposed to what we usually see here, see here when I'm testing my flow, we don't just have the run flow button, we are actually trying to gather and get some inputs from the user before we can uh, run the flow. And as you'll notice, some of these are starred, meaning that they are required for um, the flow to actually run. So if I try to run this flow now, we'll, we'll see that you know input is required, email is required, etc. So I could put in some information here, just random text information. I could say whether this is yes or no. I do think this is a little bit confusing. Um, if if the slider is on the left, that's actually no. If the slider is on the right, it's actually yes. But you can kind of see that these are the other way around. Um, it's just to kind of signify this is a yes, no. Um, file content, so I can upload a file to this. Um, it's not going to output anything, so that should be fine. Uh, email address. Um, this does actually check um, does actually check the details of the email address. So I can put d365 speak at gmail.com so I can kind of see that it will uh, not only um, validate that it is an email address, 
tries to suggest people as well. So it'll pick up email addresses from inside your um, Office 365 tenant. So if I put Matt in here, it would probably resolve my email address and suggest that. I can click enter. You can kind of see that this is now become uneditable, the email address, and we have a next button so I can remove it. Or I can add multiple email addresses in here. Number, we can add a number in. So we actually have some ups, uh, some ups and down uh, arrows here allow us to input a number or we can just type in a number as well and we have a trigger date where we could specify a date say 29th of November um, and then once we have all this information we can click run flow we'll wait for it to do its thing it says it started that's great and then we'll check the outputs here we go so we've got all the inputs and the inputs go in um, a JSON and then the outputs, we can kind of see this is the first input I put in. Um, true, that's the yes, no response. So uh, the yes, no responses are always um, labeled as true or false, not yes or no. Uh, we have the email address in here, have the number in here, and we also have the date in here. So that's really handy. So if you need to manually trigger a flow, you can quickly gather some pieces of information and you can um, then use that later on in your flow for other things. So say send an email, emails to people. Let's take a look at these in a bit more detail though. So um, for the first input, there's, so as you see, each one of these inputs has uh, the ellipsis or the menu on the right. Um, and each one has a bunch of different um, settings in as well. So we can delete, we can make the, delete the, the input. We can make the field optional uh, or required as we kind of had in the last one. We can add in a multi-select list of options, or we can add a drop-down list of options. So if we change this to be add a drop-down list of options, we could say uh, first option, second option, uh, uh, third uh, option to be nice and not uh, not um, conformed at all. Um, so we can add that in. We could also make this um, field optional. So if I click here. Um, that now makes the field not optional, so uh, sorry, it is optional um, from required. You'll try to notice the UI doesn't update, this box doesn't untick, so it's kind of hard to see whether this is actually optional or not. So as you keep clicking, you have to go out. Um, you also have the options to then delete any of these entries. Uh, for the yes, no's, we just have the optional or delete. Um, the file content's the same, the email address is the same, the number is the same and the trigger date is the same. The only one that's different is this um, manual, this text input at the top. Um, so we're going to add another text input uh, and we're actually going to change this to be a multi-select option. So we can show you and we'll add in uh, things like, uh, we'll just add some numbers. So one, two, three, and four. Uh, and this is multi-select, so you can select multiple ones of these. Um, and we'll add that multi-select into here, so we'll go to input one, add that in there, and then we'll test it. So we'll make the uh, we'll make the email optional as well. We'll click test. I'll perform the trigger action, save and test, uh, and then we go through here. So so the first one is this drop down list, so we can choose first, second, or third options, so we'll choose the second option. We'll leave this as no for now. Um, just a note, the file content, it doesn't actually say it's required at any point. Um, there's no star here, but unless you check to say that it's not required, it is actually still required. So we'll just grab a file and put it in there. Uh, email address is now not required, so I don't need to fill that in, so I'll leave that on blank for now. Number is still required, we'll put that in. Uh, trigger date, we'll put this in here. And input one, we can select uh, multiple options, so we can select four and two, and then we can click run flow. So we'll wait for that. That says it started successfully. Oh, it's failed. That's interesting. Uh, invalid template email doesn't exist. Uh, do not find the first email doesn't exist. Uh, email doesn't exist. So, yeah, so that's actually saying that my output is expecting email, uh, but I didn't put an email in. So let's just try that again. Uh, it's just find errors. Always interesting. Uh, file content, let's add something in, an image. Uh, maps at maps.com. I'll add that in. Number, we'll add five in. Trigger, we'll add date in. Uh, import, we'll add 
comes in from flat and we'll see if it works this time. So run successfully. So here we go. So we can kind of see um, that we've got all the options here. So we've got the first option, that's the that's the option drop down set. The false, that's the opposite to the yes, no, true, false thing um, switch that we've got in there. We've got the email address that we actually complained about not being in there, which is interesting. Uh, the number that we've added in, the date, and we've also got the um, the multi-select option set here. So you can also rename all these as well. I've not I've decided to not rename them, uh, but you can rename them and put things like uh, please pick an option, um, and then in here you can put these are your options. Uh, these are your options. Uh, yes, no, you could have true or false, etc. So you could update these. And as we save and test these and try and show them, uh, we have, uh, please pick an option. These are our options that's what we have over here. Um, and we've got true, false here. So you can rename those and those inputs can then be uh, used as outputs. So I think this is a really useful thing. You can gather the inputs as well as just manually triggering the flow. You can then use those later on to email, to update something, to add a number to something, whatever it is. I think this is really great. So what do you guys think? Uh, have you used these? Will you use these in the future? Let me know down below in the comments. As always, if you like this video, please like and please share with your friends. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.